All right. What is up, everybody? Shout Scout 13 here. Report again for another unit overview, breakdown, whatever you want to call it. Mostly just kind of talking about Sabine Wren. So, yeah, she Ahsoka's coming out this week, or by the time you've watched this video, it's already come out. And we have seen Sabine, well, I don't know what's going to happen yet, but we're, we have seen Sabine with Ezra's lightsaber, and she has done a lot. She has done some training with the, the darksaber with Kanan, or Caleb Doom, however you would like to pronounce him, his name, or whichever name you'd like to use for him. I don't know. But... She has some training with Jedi, at least. So her wielding a lightsaber makes sense, especially since he left his lightsaber with her at the end of Rebels. And whenever I picked up Sabine for the first time, and I think, what, 2020 was the first time I picked her up, I'd never seen Sabine or heard of her or knew who she was. And so I tried to look up, you know, Star Wars Rebels, and I saw, like, season four, because it was at the very bottom, so I picked an episode that had something to do with her, or Mandalore at least, and yeah, it was interesting to see her, and then I started Rebels from the very beginning, and it was really cool to see Sabine, and you know, how she was, and that she was in the Rebels, and I think that they did a really good job of, you know, translating her character into Legion, and so... We will, or I will discuss a little bit about Sabine and some possible lists I think she's going to do very well in, even though she is very expensive for what she has, and I think she needs to go down just a little bit. I think maybe if she was like 115, it would be a little bit better, or if maybe she was at least Courage 3, that would be great, but I doubt we're going to see Courage 3. We're probably going to see her price go down to maybe like 115 or something like that. Or maybe even the dark saber at least go down to ten. I don't know. I think fifteen points for the dark saber is fine on her. But yeah, so let's talk a little bit about her first. I want to mention that the twenty-five dollar gift card giveaway is still going on. That'll be done in about two weeks. So you still have about two weeks to leave a comment and be a subscriber. And then if you join the Discord, it's an extra bonus. So really cool and yeah so that is going on if you haven't already like i said you're welcome to go to the discord join up and it's free and you know if you've got any questions feel free to post it if you've got so i mean if we're looking at cis stuff you know the chosen one or anthony and lucas the emperor emperor atlantis do a lot of looking and talking at the cis chat which is great because, again, I am not necessarily a GAR or CIS player, so it's very awesome that these guys help out and can give you a ton of information about them. And for GAR lists and stuff, you know, we even have a Canadian Bear who does a really good job at GAR, who's a really, really good GAR player. And it's awesome to see the lists that he has come up with, and playing him was awesome. Um, I was looking forward to it for such a long time. I knew I was going to wind up losing to him just because the list was awesome. Like, that's not necessarily a list that, you know, mine that I had submitted a while back could handle. But, yeah, it was awesome. He's a great person to play against and a great person who knows what he's doing when it comes to Gar. So, yeah, uh, thank you guys for all the stuff that you do. And then for people who are in, like, Rebel stuff, like, you know, talking about the little murder bears and stuff like that. And even people showing... Uh, their murder bears and Canadian bear showing his little Dagobah little um, terrain piece. There it is. I can't even talk about it. And Bungle 16018 or 16018, you know, coming out with some really good stuff showing his little murder bears and, you know, what he does. So, yeah, go ahead and join up on the Discord either to show your progress or to show your stuff and or just ask questions or even submit lists that you like and, you know, want some feedback on. So that is one thing that you can do. You can also head to the Clan of Shadows. Here you're going to be able to get every video that I come out with early. So I usually come out with videos on Sunday or Monday and post them up onto the Patreon for everyone to, you know, check out and, you know, get a good little view early and maybe even give some suggestions about what to do if I need to change anything or update it. That is the best spot to do it. I'm also going to be doing a Patreon giveaway very, very soon. And specifically just towards Patreon members, I'm trying to figure out if it wants to be like, you know, Rebel Vets or a $30 gift card or, you know, I have Veers as well that I can give away. But yeah, so it's just something specifically for the Patreon members just to show as a thank you. 
And lastly, you can head on over to theburnacademy.com and sign up for 15 bucks a month. Download the app and you get three, four, five, and six day week workout programs. They're all different. And then you, there's corrective exercise programs, 30 minute programs in case you're short on time, at home stuff, abs and core stuff, you know, videos and descriptions of everything, coaching videos, 120 different recipes, ways to track your progress. And I am changing it up a little bit to where for online coaching, there's bodybuilding, there is corrective exercise stuff, and there is also glute specific training. So I've kind of revamped that and I'm still working on it a little bit, but at least it is up and running. And yeah, so if you haven't, go ahead and head there, look like a pro. And yeah, so today we're going to be talking about Sabine. So I did come out with a Mando video like probably a little while ago. I forgot exactly the date that just goes over the Rebel Mandos. So just, you know, the Mandalorian Resistance and the um, Clan Ren as well. So if you haven't checked that out, I'll leave that in at the end of the video, a little link so that you can click it and check it out. But yeah, so Sabine, she is 125 points. She's got five health, two courage, so kind of low end of courage. She does have the red dice with the surging to defense and surges to crit for offense, which is very nice. She shoots only at range one to two with her pistols, but she does have gunslinger, so she is going to be shooting against two different units. So she could probably target one unit of stormtroopers and another unit of stormtroopers. She doesn't have, you know, uh, sharpshooter. So you're really going to be looking for crits, and that is kind of an issue with her. It's not being able to have the sharpshooter, but she does at least have the gunslinger, which is nice, and search to crit. And it's a single rainbow, pierce one, which is very awesome. And she does have just two black in melee, so you don't really want her in melee unless you equip the dark saber. You want to kind of keep her at that range one to two or going after objectives, and she is pretty fast. She's speed three. She does have nimble, so if she spends a dodge, she gets to just maintain that dodge no matter what. If you, she's got four dodges and she spends a ball, she's at least keeping one for the whole round. And then so vigilance is amazing if you, you know, keep the commander in range, which is sometimes difficult. Maybe not for the first round or two, but after that, she's probably going to be jumping in and doing a lot. So, you know, just at least command cards or other units that can hand out dodges would be really nice. She does have Impervious, obviously, so like all Mandos do, I should say. That's why it's obvious that, you know, anytime there's a Pierce, like Pierce 2, you're going to be rolling two extra defense dice for that. And she does have Jump 2, so she can be able to jump pretty far for the jetpack. She does have a training slot, two gear slots, and a weapon slot for that Darksaber upgrade. All right, so the Darksaber, is it worth it? Well, let's take a look. She gains Dauntless, so if she's suppressed but not panicked, she can give herself a suppression token to make a free move action, basically still allowing her to move and be mobile. And then she becomes immune to Pierce, which is really, really nice, especially if, if she's going to be going up against Jedi or Sith or anything like that. And this does have impact one, pierce one, which is good against the armor skew now. And that pierce one does really help. So if you do play it on getting her close, which she can do and close that gap pretty easily with that speed three and jump two, this is really nice to have. And more than likely, she's going to be getting shot at a lot and gaining a ton of suppression. So the dauntless is probably going to help her out. And having the five black surge to crit, impact one, pierce one, that's pretty good. So at least the melee option is going to be nice. And if she's in melee, she's not going to be gaining more suppression, and she's going to be safe from getting shot at. So that's not bad. So, yeah, and it's the only thing to equip to her. So if you want her just to be a shooty-shooty little Mando, don't equip it. If you do plan on getting her close, there are some instances where it's going to be nice. But the Dauntless really, really does help. Now, let's take a look at a few training upgrades that will be amazing on her. Duck and cover, not so much, because, again, she doesn't want suppression. Endurance is probably going to be one of the top five, I would say. I don't know about top three, we'll see, but definitely a top five for sure. Because at the uh, end of the activation phase, you can remove a suppression token. And maybe if she did have two suppression and you did need a Dauntless, you give her a third suppression, and then you move her up, and then you do maybe like your second action or whatever, and then with Endurance, at least you take that suppression back off, so you're back down to two, and then at the end of the round, you take one off, you're back down to one, so she's not suppressed or anything. So Endurance can really come in handy for Sabine, so I really encourage that. Hunter, 
Sure, there's a place for it, but it's not my top five. Enter the fray you don't need because she already surges. Offensive push. Yeah, that's a good one to have because she probably does need that aim with a single rainbow. You know, you're you're rolling three dice, and, you know, black are very finicky, and white dice, y you're most of the time probably not going to get anything. But luckily, she does surge to crit, so you get two different chances to get a crit on a white dice. So the offensive push could be great, and she does have a command card, her two-pip, that allows her to recover for free, so, you know, you'd be able to get the offensive push back. So yeah, that could be another top five. Overwatch, not so much, because she's probably not going to be taking standbys very often if anything it's gonna be very situational that she takes a standby so i wouldn't necessarily say it's a needed training upgrade protector she doesn't have guardian and unless yeah there, there's really just no way you, you need to have protector on her at all and then cc initiative could be a good one that would be another one of the like top six top five i should say because i mean endurance offensive push cc initiative and then the bottom three are probably gonna be the top best ones for her in what order it just depends on your list it kind of depends on what you plan on doing with her and i'll, I'll kind of cover the bottom three in a second but with c's initiative this can be good if, if you have her with maybe ahsoka and you need to give ahsoka those orders then c's initiative could make sure that she at least gets something so she has an order can do whatever she needs to do now situational awareness i think is probably like the best one and that's usually what I take on her because, again, she's going to be getting shot at a lot. And for the most part, either the surge to crits that a lot of people have or the critical one, two, whatever people have. And or other operatives that surge to crit are going to be trying to go after her either for bounty or just to make sure she goes down. So the situational awareness is going to be great. And with Nimble, she's going to be able to keep and maintain that dodge and cancel all the crits and... Sometimes you really only have one crit that goes through, and it could be a pierce one. And so having that situational awareness, being able to use that dodge to cancel the pierce one hit, you know, will be very nice in saving her. So situational awareness is perfect. And then endurance, I'd say, is another really good one. I, I just can't get over it, you know. It's always a struggle for me. She needs one more training slot, in my opinion, to be, like, really good. Tenacity. Yeah, if you're planning on bringing the Darksaber and she's probably your only melee unit... And I say melee lightly because she's not necessarily a melee unit, but she can be with the Darksaber. Then Tenacity could be really good because then you're throwing six dice in melee surge to crit. And she's got really good defense. So Tenacity could be amazing. But then one of the other um, great, I keep saying amazing, another great upgrade that she could really benefit from is Up Close and Personal. And it also has her on there. And anytime that you perform a ranged attack, at range 1 to 2, you're going to gain a dodge token, which she really needs because she's also got Nimble and stuff like that. So having up close and personal is awesome because she has Gunslinger. And with Gunslinger, you're going to perform a ranged attack. You can perform an additional ranged attack against a different unit, meaning you're doing a second ranged attack, which means that you're going to get two dodges from up close and personal. You're not going to be able to use any of those dodges to cancel crits, but at least you've got some dodges on you, and then with Nimble, you're going to at least maintain one of those dodges after you make an attack. So, yeah, I would say, you know, top three, in my opinion, would be up close, situational, and endurance. Not necessarily in that order, but definitely the top three. And then tenacity and offensive push would be the next two, and then CC initiative would be, you know, the sixth, in my opinion. Because you're probably going to want her to, to do things. And, you know, CC initiative, yeah, maybe you're playing supply drop and you get, you know, like portable scanner, or not portable scanners, the, the hollow projector, which gives you an order. So there's other ways in command cards to give her orders and whatnot. So, yeah, these are the other ones that I would mostly go with. Up close, situational, endurance, tenacity, and offensive push. Now, let's look at some of the gear that you're going to probably, whoops, the gear stuff that you're going to bring with her. Ascension cables you really don't need because you got jump and you're probably not going to use scale for any other any other stuff. Electro grappling line it's a specific to for Sabine and then it's an action and it's exhaustible. So you're going to choose an enemy trooper unit at range one and in line of sight, so you're going to have to get pretty close. It's going to gain two immobilized tokens and two suppression tokens. It it doesn't say that she's going to be able to get out of melee if she uses electro grappling line. It it's just you're going to 
stop somebody in their tracks. You're going to be able to stop a hostage unit. So if you don't have any other like force users or anything, you know, electro grappling lines can be great at stopping hostage, stopping recover the supplies from moving. Uh, from you know, if someone's about to try to run into either intercept transmissions or onto a key position, you could electro line them basically and just have them still. Another great thing for electro grappling line is if you've combined her with Ahsoka, because her and Ahsoka have a really good little card that allows for teamwork and you know when one moves the other can move or sorry when one activates the other one can move and vice versa so you know maybe you go with Sabine and you electro grappling line somebody and then you you have moved Ahsoka a little bit closer well now that person that you electro used the electro grappling line on cannot move and Ahsoka is just going to be able to get into melee with that person and stay safe so that's a good great way of helping Ahsoka out or any other user like Boa Fett or, or anyone else that you've combined with Sabine, it could be a really good one. You don't need electro binoculars on her. Emergency stems. Yeah, that could be really, really good. So what I've also found out recently is with emergency stems, if she is the, and thanks R. Tyson for this in the Discord, you, you team as R. Tyson. He is an awesome, you know, player who I play against on TTS as well as who is a, a, uh, patreon supporter but when he went to the mk gt or the that tournament in england that just happened he was saying that with emergency stems if a target of bounty you know has to take two wounds right so say maybe ig11 or ig88 has targeted sabine well maybe they get off a shot and she has like maybe two health left or one health left and with one health left they get a shot out and she only takes that one wound and she's going to die he's going to claim the bounty well with emergency stems you're going to prevent up to two wounds place the equal number of wounds on this card instead and then if you do at the end of your next activation discard each um, wound token on this card and then you're going to suffer those amount of wounds and then die well this is going to prevent the bounty from getting claimed because you're not dying from the attack of the bounty hunter that turn. You're dying from your wounds from emergency stems, so they can't claim the bounty. So emergency stems, you know, could really come in handy. So yeah, if she's, if you feel like there's a ton of bounty hunters there and you want to give her emergency stems instead of electro grappling line, then sure, that'll keep her alive a little bit longer and prevent your opponent from getting the bounty. Environmental gear, you don't need. Again, grappling line, you don't, or grappling hooks, you don't need. Her personal combat shield is probably a must, and I would always staple that to her because it's going to give you an extra, it's going to give you a shield token. So, you know, if you need to cancel a crit, because maybe you didn't take situational awareness, you use your combat shield to cancel a crit. And then it's recharge one. So when you recover, you can flip the shield token. And one card, your, sec your two pip does allow you to recover. And if you were to take Cassian, his 3-pip allows you to recover. So there's lots of ways that you can get a free recover in, and this is just amazing to keep her alive a little bit longer. So yeah, I would always, always take Personal Combat Shield, no matter what. That should be your first choice. And then either Electro Grappling Line, Emergency Stims, or Prepared Supplies. Portable Scanner, I wouldn't, wouldn't do. Prepared Supplies is a good one because it gives you that extra dodge, and again, with Nimble... If you use that dodge and it's the beginning of the round, you know, you're going to be able to keep and maintain that dodge that you just used. Recon Intel, I wouldn't take. It's not worth it compared to having a, a, you know, a wound possibly removed. And then if you, again, had situational awareness as you're training with prepared supplies, you can use that dodge all round long to cancel crits. And then you don't need targeting scopes because you're rolling a red, you're rolling a single rainbow. And more than likely, one of those is probably going to hit. And with aim, you reroll two and so yeah there's really no need for targeting scopes at all so yeah let's just go with prepared supplies and personal combat shield if you don't want prepared supplies obviously electric grappling lines the same cost so yeah so if you did endurance she's going to be around 156 if you did situational awareness 154 so yeah and then with you know ten tenacity 156 and with up close personal 158 so she gets really expensive for five health two courage that's why I think she needs to go down in price. And why most people are probably not playing her is just mostly because she's a little expensive. Well, 
But that is mostly it. Let's look at a few objectives, and, well, actually, let's look at her command cards real quick. So, explosions. During the round, this card is played. It's a being, Ren, games, as an action, arm two, thermal charge. Thermal charge is different than the, let's see, looking at the commando strike team, this is a proton charge. So your proton charge saboteurs cannot detonate the thermal charge, and sh she cannot detonate the proton charge with after this card because this you know you don't discard this card from play you just keep it so after she performs this action she can perform a speed one move and this helps her to get out of the blast radius because you've got to place the the thermal charges within range one so that'll be you will be a target so then you do your speed one move and you move either behind a corner or just out of the blast radius and then blow everybody else up so that's really, really nice. And at the end of the game, or until the end of the game, she's going to gain detonate two thermal charge. So she can, she can just detonate both of them. This is just like her character in Rebels, which I really like, and I'm so glad that they incorporated this. And then it's a it's a blast, so there's no cover, and it's, again, an, an area of effect in AoE or, you know, yeah, it's everybody, every unit at range one. And it's a red and a white, so you're probably definitely at least getting one. Sometimes you're definitely getting two, and... But yeah, this is a really nice card for her. And back in the day, people used the land speeder for an alpha strike. And I'll kind of go over a list with that because that's one of the lists that I decided to make. And then her two pip. So when Sabine Ren activates, she recovers. So until she activates, she doesn't recover. But then she does when you finally do go with her. During her activation, you may place a graffiti token at range one and in line of sight of her touching a piece of non-area terrain so it's got to be up against a like a building or something like that it can't just be on the ground and she's got to spray paint on a wall she's got a graffiti something and it can, it's not the ground but what this does is whenever you place that token down anyone at range one of it if it's your guys like if it like any other rebels they're going to be able to roll one extra dice from suppression so like if they have two suppression they're rolling three dice if they have one suppression they're rolling two dice so just roll one extra based on the suppression that you have so that way it really helps she's trying to really encourage everybody in the rebellion now if it's an enemy trooper unit at range one of the graffiti token and i think maybe in line of sight i'm not entirely sure i think it's they have to be in line of sight as well they're going to roll one less dice for suppression. So if they have three suppression, they're only going to roll two dice. If they got two suppression, they're only rolling one dice. So that's pretty cool. It, it's just a, a play against suppression. So it's not bad, but if there are better you know, choices, you could probably... You don't have to have that one. But it does... Mostly people bring it for the free recover. And then her three pit legacy of Mandalore, which is awesome. It's Sabine and two troopers. So it's the only other one. It's the only one she has that gives it to herself and others. But when Sabine Ren or Sabine Ren gains Inspire One, that's really nice. But you know, it's okay. It's Inspire One. When Sabine Ren issues an order to a commander, operative, or special forces, she's going to gain an Aim or a Dodge herself. So when she gives an order to herself, that's already a token. And then if she were to give an order to Cassian and K2, that's two more tokens. Or if she were to give one to herself, that's a token. And then maybe to Clan Ren, that's a token. And then maybe to your generic commander, that's another free token. So it's this is an easy way to get three extra tokens on her. So yeah, that's really nice. And objectives. So Breakthrough could be good because she's fast. Intercept the Transmissions could be good because she could just jump in, do a little bit of gunslinging. And then at the end, after she scores the points, maybe she jumps back behind some sort of cover and stays there for a second. Key positions could be okay. You know, key positions definitely, when I think of it, I mostly want some sort of force user. But at least with the Electro Grappling Line and maybe Dark Saber, she, she could be a better than just a regular Mando. Recover the supplies, I've seen Mandos do really well at. Uh, sabotage the motion evaporators. I usually recommend this whenever you have a bounty hunter or someone who can break ties because you're trying not to die and you're trying to possibly win on kill points at that point because you know you're probably both going to tie on victory points now if there is a way to use sabine wren and clan wren to get in and tap 
your opponent's uh, sub moisture evaporators and then maybe use electric grappling line to prevent them from getting into base contact or back into base contact with that moisture evaporator that could be a game changing little thing hostage exchange like i said with electric grappling line she's going to do really well at least holding up the hostage unit bombing run i've used mandos for bombing run before and yeah they it could work you just have to be careful with the courage like yeah they're only courage two instead of bikes which have no courage so you could possibly drop a bomb but as long as you have you know other units nearby that could pick it up you could just keep going so bombing run wouldn't be that bad and payload could be fine as well you know you're fast enough to possibly get into base contact with others near your opponent's payload little uh cart i should say so i mean she's gonna be pretty decent at most of all of these so you don't have to worry as much about objectives so let's take a look at just a few lists and there's a few other you know like if you go back to the mandalorian video yeah i've definitely included her in, in all those but yeah i've just getting done a regular rebel officer just naked by himself cassian with hunter and the config because i feel like this is just the base of what you would always want him to have because of the sniper rifle you know being one to infinity having that hunter and his marksman really comes in handy so yeah there's cassian there's k2 and then there's sabine ren with situational the combat shield electric grappling line and the dark saber since she's going to be really the only melee character and then Clan Ren to go with her has situational awareness, and then Tristan and Urza. I've got two Rebel veterans with the CM093, and, or the heavy, I should say, on both of those units, and the medium blaster trooper. And the reason I have those over the regular, just Rebel trooper units is because they have a at least critical two, and on both of them, the heavy gives critical two here, and then the Mark II has critical two, and it's an easy way of at least getting crits through past dodge and cover step into armored units. You just got to really hope for some crits or some surges. So you have at least two chances of getting crits somehow with both of those units. And since there's no other, there's no rockets on Clan Ren or anything, and Cassian has marksmen, Sabine surges to crit, you know, K2 surges to crit, and he's got four dice in melee. And that's really about it. But the incognito is going to help him get into melee a lot easier. If there were any other spots for upgrades, you could probably give him, like, comms jammer. So that way, when he does get close, your opponent can't put an order on someone who's near him. But I also have the land speeder in here with Ryder Azadi for that speed 3. Just, like, a real quick speed 3. And then I've got three other guns on there, at least to be able to get to range 3. Because he's got Arsenal 3 on the land speeder. You don't have to have the A300 rifle gunner, but for one point, it's really not going to make that much of a difference. So you, you I might as well. But yeah, that's going to be what you would want to do, specifically with maybe Sabine. You'd put Sabine on the land speeder, and then you would try to, you know, you'd play explosions. And if, you know, there were some extra points available, you could put HQ uplink on the land speeder. And then use HQ uplink with the land speeder, then use Ryder Azadi to get to speed three. You do your compulsory move at the speed three with its big base to try to get in. And with that, you probably want something like, you know, something kind of close, maybe hemmed in, you know, major offensive. You could get kind of close to them. Danger close, sure. It's kind of up to you on that one. But I did advanced positions and battle lines. But you, yeah, you use the land speeder. You do the compulsory move at speed three. You aim and shoot everything. Try to get out a few units or at least a unit. And then you'll go with Sabine and disembark at the speed one. You would throw your bombs, then do a speed one back, and then detonate those bombs. And you've just done a lot of damage on turn one and probably have at least taken out a unit because i mean it's blast with her explosions and with the you know arsenal three you're going to be rolling what is that four six nine dice nine dice at speed at range three 
getting rid of hopefully something. It's impact too, so if it's, you know, armored, at least you're doing something with that. But yeah, that was something back in the day that people used to do. That seemed like a lot of fun. So that's just one list that you can use. And I, you know, with Intercept, Recover the Supplies, Bombing Run, and Breakthrough, I put Breakthrough in there because you have Clan Wren and Sabine Wren who can get in there quick, and then the Land Speeder could possibly get in there as well. And then your Rebel Veterans and your Mark IIs can just stay behind and try to protect your your zone as well as Cassian and the Rebel Officer. And then K2, again, has Incognito. So as long as you just try to move him up and don't do anything until the very, very end, he's no one can shoot at him. And when they do, it's going to be probably hopefully a little too late. So that's why I like K2. And then Cassian is amazing with Sabine. And again, Sabine with Cassian because their command cards just really complement each other. So like, you know, his 2-pip, you know, when you give an order to a commander or operative, it gains the operative or commander's going to gain indomitable, and it's going to gain an aim or a dodge. Sorry, an aim, a dodge, or a suppression token for each wound that it has up to three. So if Sabine has three wounds, she can gain, you know, a dodge, an aim, or two dodges and one aim, or two aims and a dodge, or whatever, you know. So that's going to be great, because you also give it to a trooper, Cassian, so you can give it to Sabine. And then his 3-pip, you know, whenever you give it to a commander, operative, or special forces unit, it's going to gain danger sense and a suppression, and it recovers. So you have two cards in here that allow Sabine to recover, and then you also have her card that gives, if you give it out to a commander, operative, or special forces, it's going to gain an aim or dodge. So there's lots of ways to be able to give Sabine tons of tokens with this list. And it's 10 activations, which is not bad, and there's at least a heavy and or something almost on every unit, except for that officer, at least. So, the next one. Let's look at Boba Fett with Sabine. I'm going to give Boba Fett Hunter, Seize the Initiative, and the Flame Projector. I have the Rebel Officer with the Portable Scanners. I have Clan Wren, or sorry, Sabine Wren, with Up Close and Personal, the Combat Shield, and Electro Grappling Line. So she's more of a shooty-shooty person on this one. I have Clan Wren with Tristan and Ursa, obviously, and then Situational Awareness, Prepared Supplies, and the Jetpack Rockets, so they're a little bit more prepared for combat in this one, and have some sort of at least anti-armor. You've got two sets of Rebel Veterans and the Mark II Blasters, again, with the CM93 Trooper, just, again, to get those crits through with the fact that everyone's bringing armor stuff, and then two ATRTs with the Laser Cannon to provide, again, more anti-armor and to provide cover for Sabine and Clan Wren, and even Boba Fett. They can stay behind ATRTs. The ATRTs are going to block line of sight, so you just have to be a little bit careful of how you're going to shoot, you know, beside the ATRT. But you're going to gain, you know, heavy cover and stay out of line of sight whenever you're behind the ATRT. And, you know, you, you've got a ton of anti-armor stuff in here to be honest. I mean, Boa Fett's going to surge to crit. Sabine surges to crit. You've got the Mandalorian resistance with the jetpack rockets. And you have maybe the generic and Ursa shoot the two red. And then you also have Tristan who can shoot at range three two black. It would be blast, impact two, and lethal. So yeah, that could be a really good combo to hopefully at least take out one possibly or, yeah, possibly one miniature of a Dark Trooper, or put maybe two wounds through. And with Lethal, that really does help. Instead of spending that aim for a long shot, you can spend it for Lethal. That's what I would probably do. And then, yeah, the ATRTs are Impact 3, I think. Yeah. And it's a red and two black. And then the Medium 2 Blaster could possibly fire support with the ATRT, making it Critical 2, and it could be, what, 6 black one red so you're rolling seven dice critical two impact three you're probably getting a ton of crits through if there's an aim on that atrt as well so yeah that'd be really good and then yeah i've given you a little bit of objective stuff more like payload intercept key positions and breakthrough again because you can use those atrts to block that line of sight to bobo sabine and clan Ren, and then even if you don't shoot with them, at least they're getting really close. The ATRTs can make their way forward, and then they can just stay behind, not try to get shot. And then if the ATRTs go down, at least you can move Boba Fett, Sabine, and Clan Wren into wherever they need to go. Or just use them to do objective stuff. You know, I've, you know, being able to have Boba Fett in there with his free possible standby when you don't give him an order, 
He can use that standby. He's also got Sentinel on there, so he can, you know, use that standby up to range 3 instead of range 2. And then if he, in with standbys, you can only move or shoot. There's no ability to do free actions or anything, so whenever you have a standby on a force user, you, you obviously cannot do, like, force push or anything like that. It's just a move or an attack. So he can, you know, move closer to something, or he can at least get an attack in, and or maybe if he's into melee or close to melee, you can move him into melee, and then on his turn, he can just aim and shoot, and he, or he'll gain an, an aim from the tactical one when he does move, and then when it is his turn, he has that free aim. Yeah, there's lots of good stuff you could do with Boba Fett, and I'll, I'll do a, a Rebel Dad Bod Boba Fett you know, video if I haven't already. I don't think I have, but I'll do that soon. And for the last one, it's Ahsoka and Sabine. Obviously, because, you know, Ahsoka and Sabine work together in the new show, as well as at the end of Rebels, they go together. And I figured, why not make it? And they have a card together. So I have, you know, the Rebel Officer with portable scanners, and I've got Ahsoka with burst of speed, force push, into the fray, and offensive-defensive stance. Maybe if you didn't want the offensive-defensive stance and you wanted, you know, situation... Or, sorry, you wanted... Tenacity, you probably have to get rid of something like the targeting scopes on one of these. That gives you eight more points to do with what, what you want, so that'd give you plenty. I've got Sabine with the Dark Saber, Situational, Personal Combat Shield, and Electro Grappling Line. To be able to, again, use the Grappling Line to keep someone tied up for Ahsoka to get into melee with. And or do something with the objective sure whatever you need and then she's also got the dark saber because then what you could do is possibly go with sabine and then move ahsoka up and then you know with sabine you just kind of melee and then when it's ahsoka's turn you move her up into melee with whoever sabine was with and you just go ham i've also got clan running with the jetpack rockets and just tristan and ursa Two Rebel Veterans, again, with the Heavy, one with the Medical Droid, and both of them with Targeting Scopes to help with the CMO-93. Try to re-roll as many of those white dice as possible, because it's four white dice. Chances are you're probably getting at least one Surge or something on there, and then you can re-roll three extra white dice. Uh, that's pretty helpful. And then just a regular Commando Strike Team to bring you to nine activations. And yeah, that's that's mostly it. There's really not much, like other mando units in here i just wanted at least cl the clan ren because they have retinue with sabine so they just get a free aim or dodge at range one to two of sabine which is nice to have especially whenever you've got situational awareness on them maybe you get the retinue dodge and then you just take your aim and shoot and or you whatever else i mean if you need that aim by all means take the aim instead but yeah that is mostly it if you've got any questions about Sabine, definitely leave them down below in the comments. That is where I will I always check the comments and this will also help you enter in to win the twenty the twenty five dollar gift card, especially also if you are a subscriber. If you haven't already, go ahead and head to the Discord and post something wherever you want and show us the work that you're doing, which is really cool. It's nice to see and it's nice to have people discuss whatever they're going to use or maybe questions about lists that they have it i mean it just if you need ideas when people do post them feel free to you know to post your own and whenever i see a list i'm doing my best maybe not to try to rearrange the units that you have or at least you know give you whole different units that you're not using in the list that you originally wanted to get concept on because i don't know if you've got either other units or if that's just really what you want to use and based off what you want to use, you know, I mean, they're going to say, like, what's the point of this list? Like, is are they going to be able to complete certain objectives? Or are you just making a list because these are the units you like and these are the units that you want to play? You got to make sure that when you do create a list, you are looking at objectives. And because this whole game is about the objective and are you going to get the objective points? So build a list if you're going to come up with a list based around objectives and and then the units that you do like. But yeah, that's just a little quick thing that, for me, head on over to the Clan of Shadows Patreon, become a member um, of Patreon, and all of you will be able to enter in to win the $30 gift card, or, you know, if it, w if it was just a regular Rebel 
you know, unit that you want or beers. I think so far the consensus is a $30 gift card because they can get you more. So yeah, that'll be something that I'll be announcing real soon. And also you can head over to theburnacademy.com, subscribe for 15 bucks a month to get three, four, five, and six day week workout programs, corrective exercise stuff, 30 minute torture programs, at home stuff, core program, just to make sure that you're, you're doing what you need to do to gain a stronger body. And yeah, that is really it, guys. I want to really give a special shout out to all of the Patreon members, Kitsune, Emperor Atlantis, Daniel Padilla, Anthony Estrada, and Tyson. Thank you so much for all the work that you put into this channel and this, the giveaways, basically. Thank you for playing and just being a really good member. I appreciate you guys, and yeah, may the force be with you, and y'all have a great rest of your week, and have a good weekend.